one thing about this aquaponics system is I'm always watching the level. So when it dumps all the water from up top, the plants are growing down here. Then I want to see where the water level is. So I want it to be just below this tube right here. So it's a little low today. So in comes some fresh rainwater. We'll let that trickle in for a bit, raise that water level up. I am kind of thinking to myself, how fast will the evaporation level be in the summertime for this aquaponic system? Because this is my, be my first summer season with it. But I still think it'll be less expensive during the drought period than putting water on the garden, on the crop, even with lots of mulch. So we'll see. It'll be a good experiment for the summer. And then if it does well, I'm building a bigger one. Now you guys, I've been piddling about the farm, but today I really want to be about getting ready to get these tomatoes in the ground. I've been bringing them outside as much as possible. And on those cold days, letting them hang out under my inside lighting. And peppers too there. I want to give those tomato plants their best start. So what do I mean by that? It means I want to have the right, just the best nutrients to put in that hole when I plant them. So that they'll produce those great juicy tomatoes for me. Now usually I have been putting eggshells in the planting hole for calcium to help with blossom end rot, but I did some research and I found out that it's really not, the calcium really is not available to them very quickly. It takes a good while. So this year I'm going to try something a little bit different and still using what I have and hopefully the, get that calcium more available to them. This year I am going to put these eggshells on a cookie sheet. And I'm going to put them in the oven on a low heat, really low heat, to just get them all dried out and brittle. And we are gonna borrow my husband's coffee grinder. Shh, don't tell him. He doesn't watch all my videos because he's living this out with me. Um, but he's at work right now. So what he doesn't know will not harm him, right? And you can probably guess what I'm gonna do with these, with this and the eggshells. Another thing I'm gonna to wanna to put in that planting hole for my tomatoes is earthworm castings, that black gold. So my vermicomposting bin has been tucked back here behind my rain barrels, sheltered during the winter. And I have periodically been feeding them. And now I'm going to encourage them all to go to one side of the bin. That means I'm going to feed them on this one side. Maybe you can see some. I don't know if you guys can see. They're wriggling all over the place here. Different spots. Let's see if they're under this cabbage. I do see some though. But right now they're spread out all over the whole bin. So my idea is to feed them in this area and get them coming over here for a few days so that I can harvest this area. So let's do this. So a couple of my neighbors give me scraps. So that is very kind. And that is what I'm gonna do to attract my earthworm casts over. My earthworms over to this side. Oh good, we have some banana peels. Um, red, red wigglers especially love banana peels. Okay, ugh, get my hand in there. And I'm gonna take the leaves and any food I can find from this side, pile it up over here, make this side just a lot less desirable to be in than the leaf side. Now that the main freezes are over this winter. 
Yeah, there are lots of worms in here. Good, good, good. And I haven't fed them in a while, so this side is pretty clear of food. It looks like. Lots of worms, but that's good. So, fed them a lot on that side, so hopefully they'll go over there. Yeah, there's not much, not much food over here. Okay, good. Now I just have to wait for them to go to the other side and harvest this side of the bin for my tomatoes. I will link up a video Hopefully, if I can remember, I will link up a video on how I made this vermicomposting bin so you guys can make one like it for yourselves this spring. The next ingredient I'm getting out of my freezer. All right, you guys, this next ingredient I have been wanting to try for a long time. So I finally get to try it, and that is fish heads. Um, my one of my sons and my new daughter-in-law went fishing and they saved me their fish heads, so I froze them. And one fish unfortunately died in my aquaponics system. Not sure what's going on there. I hope it doesn't continue to happen. But anyway, I'm gonna thaw these out and bury them in the ground under my tomatoes. What do you think, you guys? Do you think that will help? I'm gonna kinda do an experiment. One bed with tomatoes I'm gonna do with the fish heads under them and another bed I'm not. So, I've heard great things about it, but we'll see. The other thing I have to do before I can plant my tomatoes is clean out my mealworm bin because I've been letting it go all winter and down in the bottom here is wonderful fertilizer for my tomato plants. I've got to get this mealworm bin cleaned out before baby wakes up because it's not something I want his help with, <laughs> as you can well imagine. So, I've gotta hurry. Let's do this. Okay, you guys. My daughter called and said her car blew up. I think it was the radiator that blew because it's leaking and steaming, so never fun, so, but dad is going to go to the rescue so I'm so thankful I have a husband that can go to the rescue. He is my knight in baseball cap and jeans. My daughter's knight today in baseball cap and jeans today. <laughs> so I'm going to hurry with this, get this done before baby wakes up. Let's try this again. Poor girl, she paid to have that car uh, fixed up all herself with her own money, working her own job. So, oh, that doesn't sound good. Anyway, though, let me put that out of my mind. Give it to the father. <sighs> Glad she's safe. But this mealworm frost that we're gonna be left with is great fertilizer. What it has in it is chitin, which causes the plant cell to have an immune response and guard against, it helps it be stronger against disease, like fungal diseases, and against pest damage. It helps it to fight off disease. So that is crazy awesome. It also has nitrogen in it, phosphorus, potassium and magnesium, all the things that my young tomato plants are going to need for, for green leaf and for blossom. And for setting that fruit that we want. So that is very exciting. And if you don't have a mealworm bin, if you don't raise mealworms for your chicken, why not? <laughs> you should, but if you don't, there's no problem. You can use regular fertilizer, a good tomato fertilizer. I'll link up one in the description that I've used before. But this is just one way I try to close up that loop of needing to buy fertilizer and stuff 
and also of course this is a wonderful nutrient treat for my chickens and also a good way to train chickens they'll do anything for a mealworm So look at all this wonderful fertilizer, you guys. And a little bit goes a long way with this because it's high in nitrogen. It can even burn your plants. It's so high in nitrogen. So that is so exciting. I'm gonna bag this up. But meanwhile, I wanna get started with my mealworm bin again really quickly. Okay, I put a lid on this so I've got that protected. In the meantime, I'm going to give some of these to my chickens, but it's so easy to get started, you guys, again. I'm just going to take some wheat bran, um, I used to just get this at my feed store, but now I've started ordering it because they stopped carrying it. So. You can also get it at your grocery store. And I'm also going to put in, this time I'm going to put in some cream of wheat because my kids did not eat it. It got old. There we have it, and this is their bedding and their food. And you might be saying, where's their water dish? Well, they get all their water from the veggies you put in there. So I'm gonna put some veggies in there. And some mealworms back in there and some beetles. I want those beetles to lay eggs. Interesting. This is the larvae before it turns into a beetle. So this is the mealworm. This is the larvae stage. And then this turns into the beetle. And this is the most nutritious stage for your chickens because it's got the most fat in it. So yeah, but any stage is good. I was just noticing I'm getting a lot of those that are about to turn into beetles. That should be planning to start my worm bin again and then I'll give these to the waiting mouse of my chickens. They also like a bag over it or something to kind of shelter. Toilet paper rolls, whatever. Whatever you've got. Paper bags. All right. Isn't that easy? I think that's one thing that is unique about my homestead is I use insects to my advantage. And you can too. I should also tell you that I keep this inside my house. I tried keeping it outside once and some moisture got in it. Too much moisture and then also black soldier flies started to move into it. So it just didn't work out. And in the winter, of course, when it froze, I would bring it in, but it's also, you know, the cold time. And then you can't leave it, of course, in the sunlight because it will overheat quickly in this, in this glass sided cage. So it depends on if you had a shed, maybe, I don't know. It depends on where you live. Texas gets pretty hot even in a shed, you know, for creatures to live in an enclosed space. So I don't know, you might be able to work out something where you could keep it outside, but I just keep mine over my dryer. I pull the curtain, nobody even knows it's there. It doesn't smell. Every once in a while, they, you can hear them like, if it's really quiet, which it never is in my house, you can hear them rustling, which bothered some of my family, like rustling in the paper bag. Um, but I mean, you can take the paper bag out. So. And then um, they, they've never escaped. I just keep, 
a regular terrarium lid on it. Fits on it for, that I got from the pet store and they've never gotten out. So it's pretty easy to keep in your house. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, just you just feed them every once in a while with an old potato, some, some scraps to give them moisture, and you just keep harvesting with the sifter. Just harvest those mealworms for your chickens and then harvest the fertilizer at the end of a season. Usually I'll do it in spring and in fall. I'll, I'll um, harvest the fertilizer and put it out in my garden. All right, you guys, I think that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I think I'm getting closer to being ready to plant those tomatoes, you guys. Good job. Make <laughs> eggshell. Egg LJ, what are you eating? Eat popcorn. You're eating popcorn? That's <laughs> good popcorn. Don't tell Uncle Hunter that we're making eggshells in his coffee maker. Oh no. <laughs> Mum's the word, folks. <laughs> Mum's the word. <laughs> you won't even know <laughs> until he watches this video. <laughs> not we'll say oh don't watch that one <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys I have my calcium eggshells ground up eggshells I have my mealworm frass fertilizer and I have my fish parts I won't open that and show you <laughs> so I'm almost ready to plant my tomatoes I think I'm gonna get up early and plant all my tomatoes in my garden so that will be super fun but I've got one more thing left that I wanted to put in that tomato hole with the tomatoes and that is that black gold vermicomposting earthworm castings. If you haven't figured that out by now. <laughs> so I fed them in this part of the bin like I showed you guys. And I'm gonna harvest this part. I've got my sifter all set up. I've got a, I built a little simple sifter with some wood and I've got a little bin under it and I'm just gonna sift out this black gold Okay, I was gonna sift it, you guys, but I do not see very many worms. I didn't want to lose a lot of my worms because I just fed them on the other side a little bit ago, but I don't see many. So, I think what I'm gonna do is just, see that is the earthworm castings. But I think what I'm gonna do is just harvest the bin. If I get a few worms, I get a few worms. We're not gonna worry about it. That will be good, good stuff for my tomatoes to grow up in. 
Now I wish I had got some more coconut core to put in there so then I can scoot it all back, but I'm just going to leave that empty. I went to a place today and I couldn't find any, so I'm, I think I'm going to order some. I'm not sure. Maybe try to find a store that has them and then I can just replace it with that. I really love the coconut core. It comes in those dried bricks and you soak it to get it wet. I really like that for starting a warm bin and continuing it. And like I said, I'm going to link up to the video where I started this, but I wanted to quickly show you that it is two containers put into one. So there are boards on the bottom of this container so the leche or the liquid can leach out so it doesn't ever become too wet in there. So it was just the perfect consistency of moisture. So I love that this bin is working out so well. And I've got two lids here, a little bit more insulation for the winter. Oops. And it's in a very shady spot, so I'm hoping that it won't get too hot this summer. I don't think it will. Made it through last summer, so yes. Black gold, baby. I'm gonna grow me some good tomatoes. Go on, get back in there. <laughs> All right, you guys, I think our charge is healed up and ready to rejoin the flock. Or I know she is, and she's gained weight. She's looking good. Come on, girl. Let me just give her a quick once over. She has gained weight. Oh, that looks much better. Going feathers again. Still a little red right there, if you guys can see that. A little red right there. Still has a little sore, but it's looking good. Let's see this side. Yeah, still a little bit red. All right, I think I am gonna wait till this gets covered with feathers more before she rejoins the flock. If you didn't see the last video, my rooster really injured this one. This hen, it is his favorite. So I have seen people put little saddles on chickens, like fabric saddles, but I'm hoping that will not be the case because that is a little bit too much maintenance than I wanted to do. So I think I would rather get rid of the rooster than saddle all my girls with little cute fabric saddles so I don't know what do you guys think so I am gonna I was gonna have her rejoin the flock but I just don't quite think she's ready I would like to see a little bit more feather coverage on those sores and those red places so she's gonna have to stay in her coop for a wee bit longer aren't ya she still does feel very warm Alright, in you go girl. Sorry. I know you want to rejoin your friends. Not quite yet though. And you guys, my compost is heating up again. Victory.